Here I'll do a general equilibrium problem. We have an exchange economy with two consumers. One has a Cobb-Douglas utility function, the other a perfect complements utility function. Consumer one uh, has a Cobb-Douglas utility function and the initial endowment of good X and good Y of zero and 10. Consumer two, the perfect complements utility function and an initial endowment of 20 units for good X and five units for good Y. The subscripts represent the consumer. First thing we'll do, and I did this in a recent video, is we're gonna normalize the exponents on the Cobb-Douglas utility function to sum to one. Uh, this will simplify the mathematics for us. So here's our general Cobb-Douglas utility function raised to uh, the A and B power here for good X and good Y. To normalize exponents to sum to one, we'll just do the following, A divided by A plus B, and then B divided by A plus B here. And why do we do this? Um, the A divided by A plus B will represent the share of income spent on good X, and the B divided by A plus B will represent the share of income spent on good Y. And, and using this property here, this useful property will, again, simplify the mathematics for the Cobb-Douglas utility function. So we'll start with the Cobb-Douglas utility function. I will normalize these uh, exponents to sum the 1. Right now we got X raised to the power 1 and Y raised to the power 1. So let's get them so they will sum the 1. Doing what we did at the end of the last uh, slide, a divided by A plus B will just be 1 divided by 1 plus 1, or 1 half. And we'll do the same thing for the Y exponent, B divided by A plus B, where A is 1 and B is 1, gives us 1 half. So in other words, we'll spend half our income on good X and half our income on good Y with this type of utility function and these exponents. So what can we use that information for? Well, we know that, again, this property that the consumer will spend one half their income M on good X. So the spending on good X is the price of good X times units of good X. And because of this exponent is raised to the half power, we're going to spend half our income on good X. So now all we have to do is solve for X and we basically have the demand for good X. We're going to do a few simplifications here though. Uh, first, we're going to normalize the price of good X to one. Okay, and uh, we also need to figure out what income is. So income is going to just be your initial endowment times the respective price of that good. So we have zero units of good X times the price of good X. That's part of the consumer's income. And the other part of the consumer's income is that consumer has 10 units of good Y. Multiply that by the price of good Y. So that's what's going in parentheses here. Your initial endowments multiplied by their respective prices. Making the substitutions then, the price of good X is one, the price of good X is one down here in the denominator, and simplifying, the demand for good X is five times the price of good Y. Doing a similar thing for good Y for this consumer. The consumer will spend half their income on good Y getting the consumer's demand for good Y here by dividing through by the price of good Y. Once again, the consumer's income is the initial endowment times the respective prices. Substituting one in for the price of good X. Simplifying here, the consumer will buy five units of good Y. Moving on to consumer two. Consumer two's initial endowment is 20 and five. Taking what's in parentheses uh, and setting that equal, uh, this is what we do with perfect complements. So the consumer here will consume uh, equal quantities of good X and good Y in order to maximize utility. We're gonna plug this result into the consumer's budget constraint. So a typical budget, budget constraint would look like this for the consumer. Income equals the price of good X times units of good X plus the price of good Y times units of good Y. Making that substitution, so where I have this X subscript two, I'm now plugging in Y subscript two. 
We'll also do the normalization of the price of good X by setting it equal to one. So that's what I do here. The price of good X is just one. And now we're going to solve for uh, Y. First, I'll factor out on the right-hand side a Y term and then divide through by one plus the price of Y. So now we have the demand for good Y. Income over one plus the price of good Y. And uh, once again, what is the, the, the consumer's income? Well, it's just going to be the uh, initial endowment multiplied by the price of good X. The price of good X is 1, so we just get 20 here. The initial endowment for good Y, 5 times the price of good Y. So it's basically what we did for the other consumer. And then the demand for good X, since Y equals X here for this consumer, the demand for good X is identical. All right, uh, moving on. Uh, let's write the demand for good Y for consumer one and consumer two. And then let's get a total demand for good Y. The total demand for good Y will be given by Y subscript one plus Y subscript two. So just doing the math here, we get this result. And <clears throat> so just rewriting that again, the total demand Y is just the consumer one's demand plus consumer, two de co consumer two's demand for good Y. And we're going to set that equal to the total endowment of good Y. So setting the total demand for good Y equal to the total endowment for good Y. Uh, the total endowment for good Y is going to be 15. Consumer 1's initial endowment of Y plus consumer 2's initial endowment of Y. And then we're going to just solve for the price of good Y. Uh, so subtracting 5 from both sides. So here we have the result from the last screen, and now I'm just going to simplify this. Uh, the first thing I do is I take on the left-hand side this 1 plus the price of good Y, and I multiply both sides through by it. So we have this now on the right-hand side. Simplifying the right-hand side becomes the following. Subtracting 10 from both sides. 20 minus 10 is 10, and then subtracting 5 times the price of good Y from both sides, we have the following. Therefore, the price of good Y is 10 divided by 5 or 2. And we have Y subscript 1 equal to 5. And for consumer 2, their demand for good Y is going to look like this. And now we're just going to substitute into it the price of good y which is 2 so I put a plug a 2 here and a 2 here and we see that equals 10 and then for the demand for good x for consumer 1 uh, 5 times the price of good y simplifies down to 10 and then x sub x subscript 2 the demand for good x for consumer 2 once again evaluating this uh, P subscript Y at its price too, we see that equals 10. Okay, I hope you found this video helpful.